What's up guys? There's some important work that's being done to our favorite kernel that could really take the GNU Linux operating system to new market share heights and make it much more accessible to casual PC users. The recent work on the Linux kernel is for it to handle Windows applications as well as games and possibly even anti-cheat software, which currently is a big limiting factor for Linux when it comes to online gaming. Whenever you're playing online and there's anti-cheat in place, if you're running a Linux system, then the anti-cheat can get false positives. It can think that you're hacking or cheating in some way when really you're just playing the game on Linux. So this obviously is a no-go for anybody that's really serious about online gaming. They're not gonna want to get their account banned or repeatedly getting kicked from a server when they're about to make a big play just because they're playing on a good new Linux distro. So right now, most game developers are designing their games to work on Windows because of course that's the dominant OS. So they're going to get the most bang for their buck without having to port the game to Linux and Mac OS and different operating systems. And of course, Microsoft themselves is also a game developer. So obviously they're going to develop their games to work on their OS. Now, it is possible to run Windows applications and games on Linux. If you've ever dealt with this endeavor, then you're probably familiar with Wine. Now, Wine is great for getting good performance in these applications, especially in gaming, because instead of simulating internal Windows logic like you would with a virtual machine or an emulator, Wine translates Windows API calls directly into POSIX calls that are compatible with Linux on the fly. Now, this might sound like a lot of gibberish, but this layout should help with understanding and break things down in a less technical way. Each of these can be thought of as a layer of abstraction. So, of course, at the bottom level, you have the bare metal of your computer. This is going to be whatever graphics card and processor, RAM, hard drive, etc. that you have in your rig. And then above that, you have the kernel and the drivers that talk to these different pieces of hardware. Of course, with Linux, a lot of your device drivers can just be built directly into the kernel. And then above the kernel layer, you have the API layer, which is what we were just talking about. So examples of an API could be things like Vulkan or DirectX. These provide high level abstractions for system calls. And when I talk about abstractions, what I'm basically referring to is being able to write a program in a way that it can do something very complex with fewer lines of code, and also in a way that it will work with most systems. Uh, with video games, for example, they're doing very complex things. And if you wanted to do those complex things in a kernel mode, uh, well, there's a lot of extra stuff you'd have to do. You would have to build the 3D libraries for each of the games, and you would have to write the code in such a way that it could be handled on different drivers. Like, you might have to write it in one way for an AMD graphics card, and then another way for an NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, you might even have to write them in different ways for different generations of those graphics card, and you would have to handle all the different sound cards that people have. So it's really just best to have them all talk to the API and then pass the commands down the layer of abstraction to hardware. Um, now, newer Windows games and applications, they are being coded differently. A lot of them are making system call instructions from the application code uh, without resorting to the Windows API. And the result is broken wine support because if an application isn't making Windows API calls, then there's nothing to translate into POSIX ones at the API layer, which is where wine actually operates. Since these applications are making system calls, they are expecting to talk directly to a Windows kernel. And of course, on GNU Linux, we're running the Linux kernel. So when these calls are made, the result is the commands being misinterpreted and producing undefined behavior, which usually is going to cause a glitchy gaming experience at best, or at worst, just cause the game to crash. 
but now a solution for these system calls is currently being worked on and it's going to be added directly into the Linux kernel. So this solution is called syscall user dispatch. Essentially what this feature is going to do is determine whether the particular piece of code that is running is going to use the older method of talking to the Windows API, in which case it'll pass control to Wine to handle that translation into POSIX calls like we're doing now, or if it needs to make direct system calls like a lot of these new games are doing, uh, then it's going to kick into action and it's gonna raise a SIG sys for any of those system calls that is attempted by libc or whatever code library is being used in the development of these Windows applications. Um, so then it can talk to the kernel and do what it needs to do. And this should be more effective than some of the previous ideas like having, pat having Wine patch a game at startup so that the game code would just get converted to something that is forced to try and interact with the Windows API instead of making the direct system calls. This does work, but again, it's going to trip anti-cheat because you're modifying the game code and if it doesn't match what the original is, then anti-cheat's going to think that you're hacking. And obviously, if anti-cheat is tripped, you're not going to be able to play online. And this should also be better than filtering the syscalls through seccomp, which was another idea. Uh, so seccomp is a Linux kernel security feature that filters processes in a similar way, but it only makes one transition into a secure state where a process doesn't have access to most system calls. Uh, it can only exit to do a SIG return or read and write to file descriptors that are already open. So this isn't as efficient for passing control between Wine and system calls. It results in multiple switches between user space and the kernel, which will cause a big impact to performance and result in much lower frame rates in games. Now, and also like most security features, seccomp is really just best to use for security and not in situations where you want high performance. So in summary, this syscall user dispatch, it could provide much better performance in games and Windows applications, as well as just them actually working than the current methods that are in place on Linux. And it's going to make gaming, especially online gaming, much more viable on GNU Linux. So you might be wondering, when are we going to get this amazing feature added to the Linux kernel? Well, we should be seeing it as early as version 5.11. Uh, currently, the mainline kernel is on version 5.10. But if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that the Linux kernel is updated very often. Uh, it seems like just a couple of months ago, I did a tutorial on upgrading my kernel version in Gentoo. And I believe in that video, I upgraded from, I upgraded from 5.7 to 5.8. So we're probably going to see 5.11 come out early next year. And if you're running a rolling release distro like Arch, uh, that's always on the bleeding edge, then you're going to have this kernel available to you shortly after it comes out. 